Geometry, Chapter 4, Section 3, we're going to talk about rotations. Again, um, another part of geometry where we're not changing the shape size, we're just moving it in a different direction. So rotations are going to change the orientation, um, could invert the, the, the shape, could do a lot of different things to it. We are typically looking at counterclockwise rotations. And so there are some some rules we're going to get to here in just a second. Rotations on where we'll be looking specifically at 90 degree rotations, 180 degree rotations, 270 degree rotations degree rotations and then obviously if it was 360 it would be right back where it started and these are going to be rotations um, about the x-axis or excuse me about the origin so everything will go through the origin whether it's 90 degrees 180 degrees or 270 degrees so if I have a point and you might want to hit pause real quick and, and copy this down I have the point for negative 2, and I rotated that point about the origin in a counterclockwise direction, and I wanted to go 90 degrees. What I would do is I would take the coordinates and I would apply them to negating the y value and putting it first. So a 90 degree rotation for this specific point is going to start with a positive 2, because I just negated that negative 2 and then I just put my x-coordinate in the y position. If I'm going to go 180 degrees, I'm going to negate my x-value, which is negative 4, and I'm also going to negate my y-value, which is, in this case, going to be positive 2. And then finally, I'm going to put my y first for a 270 degree rotation, so that's going to be negative 2 and then I'm going to negate my x, which would be negative 4. And so this is a um, really good common way if we're going to rotate a shape. Um, we don't necessarily have to graph it if we have the coordinates. And so I can look at, uh, this is actually example number 2 on page number 173 in the textbook. And so I'm just going to take the four coordinates, the R, S, T, U. R is 3, 1. S is 5, 1. T is 5, negative 3. Um, and U is... 2, negative 1. Now, they may ask you to graph. They may not ask you to graph. In this case, they want a 270 degree rotation. And so if we recall, in our 270 degree rotation, what we're going to do is we're going to put the Y first. At B. I use the B because that's what they're using, but I like to put X and Y. I'm going to put the Y first and then I'm going to negate the X. And so real simple, I can just take each one of those coordinates, um, set up my little coordinate pairs here, and I'm going to put the Y values first and negate the X. So that's going to be 1, negative 3, 1, negative 5, negative 3, negative 5, and negative 1, negative 2. And again, if I needed to graph that, I could absolutely put that on there. So now you may have something where you take um, and combine a couple of the sections that we just done, that we just done. There's some good English that we have just completed. And so you might actually have a rotation, and then they might, they might ask you to uh, reflect it through x equals 1. So Let's um, let's take this one, 
and I want to take those coordinates, the 1, negative 3, the 1, negative 5, negative 3, negative 5, and negative 1, negative 2, and I want to go ahead and put those on a graph. Okay, so what I have done is I have plotted those points, and this is, let me add a little bit more of this, this is u prime, this is r prime, this is s prime, and this is t prime. And so now I want to take those, and I want to reflect them through the line y equals 3. And so again, this will be real simple, excuse me, simple, struggling with my words. And we're going to look at perpendicular distance. So we're going from here to here and reflect on the other side, there to there. And that'll be kind of difficult. I didn't think that out ahead of time. And so my R is going to be the same, or my S is going to be the same as my R plus just a little bit more. And so T, I'm going to go ahead and go back and clean that up because that looks a little messy. I just wanted to draw it just so you could see it. T is going to be um, eight spaces away. And I didn't do this very well because I'm going to be, you know what, I'm going to modify this and make it correct. And so I'm going to get rid of this. And this is why we write in pencil, folks. And so I'm going to take it here. And the reason that I didn't like that one is because it was going to be off my graph. And my graph wasn't drawn properly. So we'll fix that. So we're going to take it through y equals 1. Okay, so from t prime to y equals 1, that's going to be 6 spaces. So 6 spaces above. It's going to be here. We'll go double prime. <laughs> and then my u, that's going to be 3 spaces there. So 1, 2, 3, right there. And then my R is going to be four spaces. So that's there. And my S is on that same line. And it is going to be uh, six spaces. So it's going to be two spaces above there. So there is my S. And so that is called a composite transformation because we did two things. We did um, a rotation and then we did a reflection. And so that is chapter four, section three, rotations.